Greetings, folks. Michael Rosso here, Film Photography Project. And behind the camera today is Mr. John Fidelli. How are you, John? <music> Manufactured in or around 1959, this camera was a staple in the USA during the height of when people were shooting home movies. It has a fixed 13 millimeter lens. A 13 millimeter lens is the standard lens. And right below the lens is your f-stops. And this starts at f1.9 and goes all the way down to f16. The beautiful thing about the camera, and the most important thing about this camera, is that it's easy to shoot because the two main films that are available today at the Film Photography Project are ISO 40 film. In order to set your f-stop correctly, all you have to do is go to this dial here, Film speed, 40. Right now it's set on cloudy, dull. I shot a test roll and it was just a dull winter day. There was no sun. That's what it was. So I set my dial at 40 ISO to dull. Now if you're on a bright day, what you would do was turn your dial corresponding with the ISO of the film to bright sun, 40 ISO, bright sun. By turning the dial, it changes the aperture in the lens. So in a case of uh, 40 ISO, bright sun, if you look at the corresponding chart up here, you're at F16. So up here, this is your uh, eyepiece, and you'll be looking through the eyepiece. And when you look through the eyepiece, you will actually see these outlines. Outside the red box, that would be if you had a wide angle adapter on your lens, uh, shooting normal in the red, that's your 13 millimeter lens. And if you were shooting inside the yellow box, you're using that as your framing, so to speak. That would mean you'd have a telephoto adapter on your camera. So generally speaking, as is with the regular lens, you'll just shoot, you know, looking through the, the red as a guide. On this side of your camera is your film indicator, and this will tell you um, how much how much footage you have left. This camera takes no batteries whatsoever. This is a fully manual camera, and you will crank it. I usually crank it until I feel it uh, getting kind of tight. Here is your uh, shutter button to make the camera run. Whoa. This is my cheat sheet. I always put a piece of tape on a camera so that when I load film in it, I always, you know, will write, you know, 40 ISO black and white. So I know what's in the camera. Here's your film compartment. You unscrew this and this whole plate comes off. The film gate is where you load your film. It gets sandwiched between the film gate and the pressure plate. Pressure. Uh, double A film for folks who don't know. Uh, it's also called regular 8mm, uh, not to be confused at all with Super 8 film. That's a whole other animal. This is a test roll, by the way, which is why there's almost no film on this spool. So you will buy your uh, film, hopefully from the Film Photography Project. It is called Double 8 Film. And what it is, it's uh, 16 millimeters in width, but it's not 16 millimeter film, even though it's 16 millimeters in width. It's Double 8 Film. And it has very specific sprocket holes that are very different than 16 millimeter. You can't use 16 millimeter film in this camera. So this is Double 8. It's called Double 8 because you will shoot both sides of the film. You will run this film through your camera twice. Essentially puts an image on each side, side by side, to load your film. You will open up the camera gate, mm -hmm. open it up, take your film, and only goes on one way. This particular spool actually says side one on it. Uh, some spools do not, and if it doesn't, it will only go on the post here one way. You know you're doing it correctly if the dull emulsion, light-sensitive side of your film is facing out towards your lens. The shiny side, which is known as the film base, uh, faces inward. So I'm going to put my film on its post, like so. Yeah, fits beautifully. Film behind the film gate, like so. I'm going to take this take-up spool out for now. Sandwich the film behind the film gate. This particular camera is really easy to load because, do you see it has these little these little shelves here. Mm -hmm. You see those things there? Yeah. Once it's in, you close the film gate. Oh, that's nice. And now I'm going to just roll off a few frames. Whoa. So now I'm going to take the take-up spool. Yeah. Uh, the take-up spool usually has an arrow on it that tells you what's happening. Oh, same thing. only goes on one way. 
on the post. Oh, very nice. I love it. Close it up. We just finished shooting side one of this very short test roll. Uh, one very important tip when you're shooting uh, your regular eight film is to not open this door uh, while you're shooting to check to see if your film has run out. If you open the door many times to check your film, every time you open your door, you will be exposing your film to light and you'll be kind of ruining your film. It's, it's, it's called flashing. You're flashing your film. Okay, take the roll out. This is their take-up spool, and what will you will do is flip it. Flip it good. Yeah, flip it. And then you will take your roll that was your film roll, take it out, and you will flip it. It just so happens this roll says side two. And now you'll go through the same, you'll go through the same exercise again. You'll put the film on the post. You sandwich it behind the gate, and there's those two ledges on this camera that are going to capture the film. Watch. Oh, it Ooh. it really just it just slides right in. Close the gate. Take your your spool that you flipped. Your film spool is now your take up spool. Yes, beautiful. Now you put now you entomb your film, and now you're ready to shoot side two. Open up film compartment. Open up the gate. Take your film out. There it is. And send it to the FPP. That's right. So here's your film. Now you will take your film and put the rubber band or whatever came with the film back on the film. Try to do this in very dim light. And then put the film back into its uh, black bag or tin that it came with and uh, send it off to be processed. And now your close your film gate. Here's your take-up spool. The original metal take-up spool always will remain with your camera. That's your way of knowing, hey, did I even shoot side two? And that's it for the Bell & Howell 1.9. I did shoot some sample images. I'm going to show you some footage that I shot with the Bell & Howell 1.9. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, write to me, uh, michael at filmphotographyproject.com, and we'll see you next time. Music